Welcome to Your Story Matters. My name is Linda Olson. I'm the founder of Wealth Through Stories and Your Story Matters Masterclass. I'm excited to introduce our next expert, Connie Albers. Connie is an author, speaker, consultant, and entrepreneur. When asked what she does for a living, she'll tell you she connects people, develops strategies, and builds brands. More recently, she focuses on speaking and writing about parenting and education, leadership, and issues related to personal growth and motherhood. When asked how she, how she does it all, she'll reply, I did it one project at a time. <laughs> when Connie's not writing or speaking, you can find her uh, spending time with her husband, Tom, and five adult children. Welcome, Connie, to Your Story Matters. Hey, Linda. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, thank you. Well, we are excited to have you. And we know that anybody who focuses on so many different areas of expertise, I know that you have to have a good story. So, <laughs> well, tell us about I, your story. Well, it's really interesting. I was listening to you read the bio, and, and I a lot of women get intimidated by that because they think, oh my goodness, there's just so much there. And a lot of my story and what I share with women is it's built one chapter at a time. And as a as an author, I, I learned to think and live life in chapters. Uh, there's a beginning and a middle. There's a beginning, middle, and end to every chapter. So for me, I have had the privilege of really having a very diverse market pace, marketplace experience as well as uh, personal development. So that's how my story has, has been woven together to put me where I am right now. It's that, um, as in every ch book, each chapter builds on another until you get to the conclusion in that final grand chapter. So I'm not at the final grand chapter yet. Um, I'm still in the middle of my, you know, my seasons and my journey. And um, so for me, what, one of the biggest things to answer your question is, Every project that came before me, I found uh, I had to really consider carefully because as a woman, we have many opportunities. And I love that. Opportunities are great, but they can also be a massive stumbling block, especially if you suffer from FOMO and you're just afraid if I don't do them all right now, I'm going to miss out on the next best thing. And what in my season of life and with the experiences I've been able to have, I'm able to speak from a perspective of that is just not true. You want to choose carefully and wisely and, and you know, be judicious in, in what decisions you make, but never let that fear of if I don't do it all, I'm going to miss out. Um, grip you and cause paralysis or cause you to be stretched too thin because then you actually never get to master it. You're just trying to spin so many plates and they're all wobbling. Hmm. Very good, very good advice. Because uh, just like you said, it, it's so easy to get, to just get overwhelmed when there's so many opportunities and so many th good things that you could be doing. But it's yeah. always seeking what is the best for me at this time, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And the other thing, Linda, is very important is knowing and living your season well. My season of life and perhaps your season of life is going to be very different from that of your audience. Uh, if you are young and you are single, uh, you have a, a different um, element of time available to you. If you have young children or you're newly married, or let's say you have a lot of littles, uh, maybe you've got some teenagers or aging parents. The, the most important thing for us to do is to consider the season that we're in and then maximize that season without compromising what matters to us most. And for most women, it's their family. You know, their family matters uh, and they don't want to get to the end of, you know, whatever corporate success we can achieve, which, you know, I've been very blessed to be able to have a wonderful resume per se and a wonderful career. But I don't, I, I, I said no a lot more than I said yes. And I was, and I knew there were some game changers that I said no to. There were some things that I knew would have absolutely sh um, changed the trajectory of my future, of my advancement and my growth. But I knew the cost of that was going to be steep 
to my kids because I'm a mother of five kids and I had to consider that. Um, and so anyway, I, I think that that's an important piece to, to remember, like you said, live and know your season and be comfortable in that. Mm, very good. Yes, absolutely. And like you said, everybody is in a different season in their life. The key is how are we going to connect to these people, even though they are at a different place we are and mm -hmm. to me, the best place to connect is through through story so tell us even um maybe in a little more uh, personal story in terms of uh, here you are so gifted offering seminars speaking training so many things what what initially even drew you into um uh, all of these areas so for me, it began when I was right out of school. I, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew what I didn't want to do. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so for me, I was working for Walt Disney World at the time, and I knew I really enjoyed um, working with people. I loved, uh, I was more of an out front, outgoing type of person. It, it, throughout all of my school, I was always involved in some, for, some form of performing or speaking. And so when I was at Disney, I was involved with corporate training. I worked with their VIPs and dignitaries. And I, an opportunity came along to uh, interview for the Walt Disney World Ambassador Program. And that was a big deal. That was a single person who represented the entire organization uh, as their ambassador. And I thought, well, there was nobody to tell me, no, I couldn't. So somebody's got to win. Why not me? <laughs> and that was my attitude. All I can, all I can do is not make it. But I'll never know if I don't try. Wow, that is so, amazing. <laughs> so I, I tried. I went through the interview process. I was quite young at the time, and I remember sitting in front of all the vice presidents of Walt Disney World and them grilling me on why would I make it an ambassador? Why would I represent the company? And all of a sudden, I get a phone call that I made it to the top 10. I was a semifinalist out of thousands and thousands of applicants. And I had no idea what I was doing. I, I, I really didn't understand the magnitude of it. I was, in some ways, I was too young to realize that it, it was out of, out of my grasp, so to speak, <laughs> that I wasn't trained in this. Um, however, I made it to the top 10 and something shifted inside of me at that moment. It didn't matter to me from that moment on if I became the number one ambassador or not. It was that I was willing to take a step outside of my comfort zone and go for it. And what ended up happening, Linda, is I didn't become the, the ambassador that year, but that was a pivoting moment in my life and in my career because at that moment, um, I got on their radar and I started traveling for the company as a spokesperson, doing mayor's visits, doing radio and TV in New York and Boston. And, and again, not fully sure what I was doing other than I knew what the company wanted and I knew I was to represent them. And that, that kind of began my next journey, which was to start my own branding business. And that, that evolved from me just seeing women constantly saying, I'm, I'm too fat, my eyes droopy, my nose is crooked, I'm too this, my hair is not the right color, my lips aren't full enough, my nose is too skinny. Just the list of things that we see every time we look in the mirror. I mean, we, we're, we're keenly aware of our, you know, mis, you know uh, imperfections. And that just led me to starting this branding company. And I wanted to teach women how to look beautiful on the outside to match the beauty that was already within them, that they didn't know how to express. And I liken it to a canvas uh, a can uh, for a painter. Basically, they start with a blank canvas and then they paint that beautiful picture of what that artist sees. And for me, uh, I wanted women to understand how to speak, I wanted them to understand how to sit and walk and talk and, and express themselves and feel good about who they were. So I borrowed $500 from a family friend, started my first business. <laughs> I, was, I was 18 years old, and it, it, I was started speaking all over to corporate women's groups, to uh, women's ministry groups. Anywhere that women were, I was there. 
And from that, I've just had this amazing career and opportunities along the way during different seasons of my life. So that's a little bit of a long story, but that was really the crux of it, not being afraid to try something that I really didn't know if I could make it or how the outcome would be. Wow. That, that is uh, amazing. You've had phenomenal <laughs> success. And I admire you for just stepping out and taking those risks. But well, I also yeah. know that um, when anybody does that, it's always a uh, transition. And in that process, often there are significant pain points that help us make those shifts in our turning points for us. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. What, what were some of those pain points for you? Well, going back to that one story with Disney, a pain point was not making it to the number one. I could have allowed that to, to knock me down and say, oh, I'm just not good enough. I didn't make it. Or I could choose the other approach, and that was, hey, I made it this far. Now, how can I leverage that in the future? Um, let's look, let's fast forward, you know, to, you know, now or the last few years. Uh, you know, out of the blue, I got a call from, I, you know, I've been very involved in, in politics. I was a senior strategist for a congressional campaign. I work currently for Social Media Examiner, and my role with them is to manage and create a training for social media marketing world, which is the largest online, the largest marketing, uh, social media marketers conference in the, in the country. I've created numerous, uh, I've helped numerous brands and public speaking figures develop their message. So fast forward from that moment, Linda, to now is there there's always a pivot. There's always a transition. And for what, for what I do now, Linda, is I come into whatever organization I am being asked to work with or for, and I assess what needs to be done. And then I map out a strategy to get them from point A to B. So that is currently what I'm doing with social media marketing world. So for me, I'm like most women, we juggle more than one thing. And my children are now all adults. So the pull and the tug of getting little ones to, to, you know, to soccer practice and basketball practice or managing the teen years, those for me are behind. So my opportunity of time and growth um, professionally and personally is, is a, I'm afforded a lot more time now. Um, going to my public speaking, I got a book with Nav Press and this I think is inspiring to, not because it's me, but because of the story. I did not have this massive online platform because I've been building brands and other public speakers. I've been building their platforms and their messages, and I didn't focus on mine. I just focused on serving others and helping others and, and extending that hand uh, to help somebody else up the next rung on their ladder. Um, however, I've met a lot of people along the way, and a good, kind, authentic, genuine act of of kindness and service goes a long, long way. So I had this whisper that, and just in my heart, that I needed to write, but I wasn't a writer. Remember, I was, I salvaged companies, I built brands. Uh, writing wasn't something I aspired to, but I kept having that nag that I needed to do this. And so I called somebody and they said, Hey, we want to send your book to Moody. And I went, Moody, me? Like, yeah, well, after three months, they pried the manuscript from my fingers and sent it, and I got great feedback. And then I realized I need an agent. I don't know how to get an agent. I'm, I'm not a celebrity. I, you know, at the time, this was several years ago, you know, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not this. I, you know, all the things we women say that we're not. But I kept doing what I did those early years in my life, and that was take a step forward. I'm just going to take the next step. That's all I'm going to do. That's, I, I can't look at the whole big picture. I'm just going to take that next step. Well, I ended up meeting some folks that introduced me to a literary agent who ended up signing me, who ended up 
helping me write a book proposal. I didn't know how to write a book proposal. I'll be honest, Linda. I went to the library and checked out uh, like how to write a book proposal for dummies or idiots or something like the idiots guide to a book proposal. And I'm reading the book trying to figure out how to do this. Um, we did manage to get the book proposal put together. And amazingly, when we sent it off, we had six different large publishing houses interested in my book. Wow. And I signed, uh, I signed and in three, four weeks now, the first manuscript, the manuscript will be due. And I have to say part of my story and what I love about what you're doing and bringing and pulling that out, like I could have gone to tragedies and crisis and overcoming late stage Lyme disease when I was bedridden. Um, I actually homeschooled my children for 21 years. I could talk about the difficulties of that. Um, because every piece of those stories have a common theme. And that common theme, I believe, is resilience, resourcefulness, and determination. Mm. So if you know what it is you're, you're going for, you may not have a clear picture. Like, you know, I want to speak to, you know, I don't know, a 10,000 stage audience. I've done that. I want to speak to whatever. Those were never my goals. My goals, Linda, probably like yours, were to always help others that are trying to achieve their goals. And that's what you're doing. You're using this platform of getting other people to share their unique story to inspire and, may, and maybe even aspire, get others to aspire to something they're not quite sure they can do. But if they've heard one other woman or one other person, who did it, that infuses hope, right? That's kind of what you're doing. <laughs> well said, much better than I could say it. <laughs> <laughs> so my, you know, I've given you a couple long-winded answers, but I think the power of story is everyone has a story. It's just how they decide to tell it. They can focus on the, all the negatives, and why they've never done something, or they can focus on how those negatives propel them toward the next step. And, and you know, Linda, you and I know we've been knocked down. We've been discouraged. We've, we've had, you know, I can't even tell you the businesses that have failed. I mean, the number of businesses that have failed, but every failure has taught me something that made me wiser and more prepared for the next business. Mm -hmm. And my story has prepared me now to share my, my, my life's work. Uh, my book is on uh, this first book is about parenting teenagers is to share my life's work and experience. Um, I want to share it with a million, with a million moms. I have a specific goal. Will I reach that goal? I, I don't know. All I know is to every day I'm going to get up and I'm gonna make a step toward that goal. Um, my goal with social media examiner is to manage and create training and develop a volunteer program for their conference and make it the absolute best they can be. So volunteers fight over each other for those positions. Mm. And the only way to do that is to get up every day and think about what strategy I can implement, what didn't assess, what didn't work, and then w implement what I learned at Disney all those years ago. What separates Disney from most of the other um, companies is just this minuscule, and you can't really you can't see, but just this minuscule difference. It's either execution or it's, in my opinion, it's such a, uh, attention to details. They don't overlook the little things. And I think as women and we're looking at our story and we're digging out the truths of our story, we need to, to not glaze over those seemingly little insignificant moments that I like to call, they become transformational moments. Oh, I love it. Wow. You have certainly given us a lot of wonderful nuggets. And you're right. When it comes to story, it's uh, sometimes we just think about that big overall, big story. But it isn't. It's the moments. The moments today that yeah. make a shift in our thinking or our actions or whatever it may be. Do you have one particular golden nugget you want to leave our listeners with? Yes. Um, my one particular gold, uh, golden nugget is to become resilient. That when you are knocked down, 
when you are discouraged, when your business venture fails or you struggle with a relationship, okay, fall down, but get up, wipe off, put some, you know, Neosporin on your wound, cry if you must, talk to your girlfriend, eat some chocolate, but get up and get back at it. There you go. Wonderful. Wonderful. So tell us, Connie, I know you have a wonderful gift for our listeners. Tell us about that. I do. I'm so excited. Um, well, listen, because you're give, because of your audience, I'm kind of customizing what I'm doing here. Uh, if uh, we will figure this out and I, we're going to, I'm going to offer that uh, any of the listeners and, and watchers, viewers of this show, if they need like a business strategy, a consultation, uh, maybe they're trying to figure out what their next step is, I'm going to offer them a, a one hour coaching session. I think we talked about that, right, Linda? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I will be offering that and um, I'll let you tell the details if you would like to do that. Yes, I'd be happy to. That is a fabulous gift. And as, um, as all of our listeners uh, have been able to listen to this interview, you'll see right underneath are the particulars of the gift of how you can get a hold of uh, Connie to sign up for that. So thank you. That is uh, truly wonderful. Thank you for all the golden nuggets you shared with us today, the encouragement, the empowerment to go forward, get up, dust ourselves off, and just keep going. That's right. That so strongly because that's all part of our story, and that's how our story unfolds day by day. It's really what I admired, everything I heard about you, what I admired was the attitude that lies underneath it all. It's a positive attitude to keep going, to learn from the mistakes, the setbacks, and, um, and then to keep going. So thank you, Connie, for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to spend with us. And I also want to thank our listeners for taking the time out to, um, to just share in this interview. And I hope that you have been encouraged and empowered with what Connie has shared today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Linda, and thank you to all your listeners. I really wish you the best as you're writing and scripting your story.